why parent? Why parent? And uh, one of the reasons that I came up with this title is I, I was talking about parenting at our Tuesday meeting. We have a Tuesday planning meeting. I was talking about what God had put on my heart and what I was thinking for the sermon. And these ladies who are around the table, there's a mix of men and women, these ladies who are around the table, by the end of our conversation, were all bawling. They were bawling about, oh, parenting is so hard, and, and our kids, and, 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 and our free time, and then they walk away, and, and it's just, and so at the end of the conversation then, the, the question kind of stood out to me is, why parent? I mean, if it's that tragic, if it's that difficult, that heartbreaking, that, you know, whatever, for goodness sakes, why on earth would anyone do it? Um, and so that's what we're going to start out this parenting series on right now, is um, why, why parent? And uh, we're going to be looking at scripture, which is a good thing, because I'm young. Uh, well, depending on who you ask, I'm 36. Uh, I've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old, uh, a three-year-old. She just turned three in July. And really, I mean, if you want to hear about parenting, I, mean, I feel the same as you. I want to hear from someone who had like nine kids, and now they've got like 30 grandkids, and all of them are following the Lord, and they've got this great track record. Like, that's what I want to teach me on parenting, right? I mean, isn't that right? You don't want to hear from a 36-year-old who's got a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and a four-year-old, and barely got his teeth cut, right? Well, the good news is that I'm not going to be teaching you out of my experience, because that's what you would want from this, you know, 60-year-old guy with 30 grandkids who are all following the Lord. You would want to hear his experience. But I'm not up here to talk about experience. I'm up here just to talk about Scripture. That's my job, is to, to share the Word of God, to study it and to share what I read. So that's what I'm going to be doing, is I'm going to be sharing what I read in the Word of God, and I believe that the Word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It's powerful. It divides between bone and marrow, between soul and spirit. It lays bare the thoughts and attitude of the heart. I think the Word of God is worth hearing. So uh, I hope you guys will uh, listen to this whippersnapper as I share uh, about parenting. And not only that, but some of you might be thinking, like, parenting is great, but either, like, I'm 15. What do I need to listen to parenting for? Or you might be thinking... I'm 75, what do I need to be listening to parenting for? But I think that you'll find that for everybody, what scripture has to say, it's applicable, and it's powerful, and I'm telling you right now, it applies to you in your life, right where you are at, it speaks to you right now. Um, so, come at this with an open heart, an open mind, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and just ask that you would examine us, Father, with your scripture. That it would search us, that it would prune us and cleanse us, the thoughts and attitudes that we have about parenting. Lord, that we would be willing to lay those preconceived ideas down in front of your throne and allow you to wash. Lord, that the washing of the word would renew the spirit of our minds. That we would not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, Lord, into your image. That we would lay down those old ideas and take up what your scripture says as our truth, as we belt the belt of truth around us today and pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, one, of, one of the objections to parenting that you'll find in the world today is that, and there are several, one of them is, well, why do it? Why parent? When there are so many people in the world. I mean, we're pushing right around 8 billion people on the planet. Do you really want to add to this hot mess? I mean, the, the world's falling apart. I mean, that's another side of it. One is, I mean, you know, there's this whole line of thinking like, man, if you, if you add another person, that's another mouth, and they're going to be eating, and there'll be less food for everybody, and think about overcrowding in the cities, and think about the pollution and our carbon footprint, and another person is going to be more energy and, and more carbon, and, and, it's gonna, and, and think about cutting down the rainforest to make houses for people to live. Like, you're just, you know, why on earth would you add another person to this, to this the 8 billion people that we've already got? And then another objection that the world has is, uh, well, the world is so nuts. 
Like, think of, for instance, during the Cold War, when people lived with the threat of a nuclear weapon at any time, like, people really questioned themselves, do I want to bring a child into a world where we're on the verge of nuclear warfare? I, any of you guys remember that time period? I don't, but that's great. I <laughs> know. And the truth is, though, we are still on the verge of nuclear warfare. I just uh, hate to break the bubble to you, but that could happen at any time, uh, whether we lived in the Cold War era or today. Um, today, with everything that's happening in the world, and we see morality sliding downhill, and we see how social media and the Internet are changing things, we see how difficult and scary it is to raise a child right now when you've got the Internet where seriously, you know, you see five-year-olds with these electronic devices, and if they just click a few buttons, they could be exposed to every sort of villainy and disgusting thing on the planet with a touch of a button. And then they go to schools, and, and all their friends who've seen a lot of other stuff, maybe you kept, you've been careful to keep your child from seeing these things, and they go to school, and their friends have seen it. Or maybe they go to school and they hear like this, this propaganda, this agenda that, that runs contrary to your moral values. Or, or they just turn on uh, television or turn on social media and they feel this, this flood of influence from everything in the world that a generation ago didn't exist. And you think, why bring a child into this hot mess? And so, I mean, those are some real objections. Uh, another objection on a whole different train of thought is that, like, you, you've heard of the term of dinks, right? Anyone know what a dink is? Dual income, no kid. Dual income, no kid. That's right. So, so Julie and I were dinks uh, for about three years, and it was nice. We paid off our income. We were young, married. Um, you know, I had a little less freedom than I did as a, as a, as a single man. I had to give up a little bit of freedom to get married, but it was still, it was great. I could pretty much do what I wanted. We could go out together and socialize, and, and now we had two incomes and, and only one uh, uh, rent or mortgage, depending on which year you're talking about. And, and so, uh, paid off tons of school debt, but then you start having kids, and what happens? You're, is it 11.58? Holy schnickers. Wow. Okay, so you have kids. <laughs> you gonna write that down in your notes, okay? S C H N I C K E R S. It's like Snickers, the candy bar, but with an S. Um, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and so, anyways, um, you have kids, and like everything changes, and suddenly, like culture tells you, your world now has to revolve around these children. They become the first, the most important thing in your life. Your marriage is going to suffer. I mean, honestly, you talk to, I remember when we were having our first, and the advice that Julie got was kind of like, okay, buck, sit down, buckle yourself up. No, that's not enough. Get the five-point harness, get the helmet on, get the brace bars, brace yourself because this is going to be awful, right? Like, say goodbye to sleep, say goodbye to feeding yourself, say goodbye to clean clothes, say goodbye to all your friends, Say goodbye to any sense of normalcy you ever had. Like, you know, next 18 years of your life is going to be miserable. I mean, that's kind of the message of the world. Yeah. That, that kids are a burden and that having these children is going to ruin your life and it's going to take so much and brace yourself because it's going to suck every ounce of life out of your body and you're going to be lucky if you survive at the end with teeth <laughs> and hair. Um, <laughs> right? So anyways, that's the message of the world, and that's, that's the way the world looks at parenting. And so you come away from all that with this big question of, why parent? Why parent, for goodness sakes? And um, if you look at Scripture, uh, you see some powerful reasons, and you start to see some misunderstandings that the world has, like the world just got it all wrong. The world's got it backwards and upside down. And part of the reason why the world is telling you don't parent for this reason, that reason, this reason, is because they don't understand reality. They don't see things the way they really are. They don't understand parenting the way it was meant to be. And when you mess up this idea of how you're supposed to parent, yeah, it becomes a lot more burdensome than it was meant to be. Not that even parenting the biblical way is still difficult, but it's not quite so life-sucking as the way the world proposes. And, and when you look at, like, the earth and humanity and what we're here for and our purpose. I mean, just 
I mean, it's 12.01, so we're not going to go into this message, right? I mean, this, this is going to be next, this is going to be the sermon for uh, kicking it off in September. But, but, if, but if you look at Genesis chapter 1, I, I want to read all, every other scripture I've got in this message that you're not going to hear is in the ESV. This one's in the New American Standard Version, the uh, 2020 version. Um, and it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. God is a God who creates, who made something out of nothing. He created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, this is why I chose the NASB, listen to this. And the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. So God created the earth, and it was a hot mess. This formless, desolate emptiness, void, and just blah. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And I just get this picture in my mind, that word hovering, it's the same word of, it would be used like a, when a bird lays eggs and, it, and it, it broods over its eggs, right? It's incubating those eggs, it's, it's keeping those eggs warm, it's bringing life. And it's this picture of the Spirit of God is often pictured like a dove. And the Spirit of God is over this big, empty, formless darkness. And it's just brooding. It's hovering. It's keeping. It's, I just get this picture in my mind of God making his plans. I mean, he lives outside of time. He thinks instantly. I don't know how that all works. But I get this picture of God thinking about what's going to be and how it's going to be and what it's going to look like and everything he's going to bring out of this emptiness, this big void. And then what happens he speaks. He starts to speak, and things just start happening. Let there be light. And in this darkness, for the very first time, there's light, and he sees that it's good, and he separates the light from the darkness. And he says, you know, let there be um, an expanse to separate the waters in the sky from the waters on the earth. And, and he says, let the waters in the earth be gathered to one place, and let those waters be called sea, and let dry land appear. And he starts to shape and mold everything, and he starts to fill it. And then he gets to this climax where he says, let us make man in our own image. And he created them, male and female, he made them. And so here's the truth, is we are made in the image of God. We're made in his image. We are God's children in a very real way. We're his children by right of the first creation, and we're his children by right of the second creation. When Jesus came into our life and we were born again. And being made in his image, we are creative. We are called to create now in his image. And that's, and that's, 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 that's as far as I'm going to go. But, but right there, we are called to follow in God's footsteps by bringing life into this world. It is a holy calling to bring life into the world, in his image, in our image. And even then, in, in the New Testament, you see how this mission of God was transformed by Jesus to now, it's not just physical life, you're reproducing your DNA, but it's spiritual life, and you're reproducing your spiritual DNA. And we are called then to bring life into the world in a spiritual way through discipleship, through evangelism, through through pouring ourselves into the lives of those around us. We're called to create. God's given us that mission, both, both physical parenthood and spiritually through this process of mentoring and discipleship. We are called to bring forth new life. And it's a holy, holy privilege. I mean, think about these baptisms we saw today. How awesome to be a part of that. And, and that's just it. God has given us the opportunity to be a part of that, of seeing that happen all the time, where baptisms aren't just like a once every year or so celebration, but like a weekly celebration of praise God. Look, he's bringing life through us. And we get to join and partner him in that process. And we'll talk more about that in two weeks. And I'm excited to kick off with you a series on parenting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, so let's... Uh, 
you know what, if, if you were here today and you saw those baptisms and you were excited about, like, there's something happening there. There's something real happening. And, and I want to be like, like these, this young man and this, this little girl. I, I want to be joined with Jesus like they were. It, that starts with confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you experience that new birth. And then the very next thing you do is you get in the water. So if you want to accept Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And you, could, you will be saved. For no one who calls on the name of the Lord will be put to shame. No one who calls on the name of the Lord will be put to shame. Um, and, and if you want to get baptized, hey, let me know. And I can fill that tub anytime. Okay? So we'll do that again. If you want to get baptized, let me know. We'll make that happen. But right now, would you just raise your hand if you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Confess with your mouth. Believe with your heart. Be rescued from every mistake you ever made and be given hope for a future with Jesus. All right, then for the sake of anyone watching online, would you join in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, Take me into your family. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe you raised him from the dead. Please forgive my sin. And fill me with your presence. And make me your child. I want to be born into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, that's right. And if you're online watching that, tell somebody. Get into a church and, uh, and start growing because a little baby on its own in this world doesn't last very long. You need some milk, you need some nourishment, you need people who care for you. So get connected. Um, get the, and, and start reading some scripture. Uh, and if you want to get baptized, like I said, let me know. Um, I'm excited to introduce to you guys our next-gen associate pastors uh, in two weeks. They're going to be here worshiping with us, and we're going to introduce them to you at the pot, uh, at, in church, and you have a chance to talk to them at the potluck. Um, and then he, so uh, this young man that we've hired, uh, he's in charge of our youth and children's, and then he's also going to help me with uh, some outreach and discipleship projects. Like, for instance, the... Um, the, that family fun day that we're planning in October. It's going to be a huge outreach to our community. i got a big budget for that. We're excited to see what God's going to do. We're going to be handing out resources. We're going to be providing a time for people to just have fun. We're going to be raising money for the missions team. It's going to be big. It's going to be fun. And if you want to plan exactly what it's going to look like, i got some sandwiches and some chips in the next room. Andy, there is lunch. i got some sandwiches and chips in the next room. So stick around and, and uh, let's talk about that. I, we need help can't do it on our own. So we love you guys. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week.